Hello and welcome to my new tutorial series that will teach you how to program your calculator assuming it's in the TI-83 series. As you can see I have a TI-84 plus silver edition and um, your calculator could differ possibly. I'm not sure if the TI-84 normal version has programming abilities but I know that the plus and of course the plus silver edition does but let's just start up the calculator and I'll be able to start teaching you how to program a calculator now um, I hope you can uh, see the screen of the calculator I know I am going to be uploading at a very high definition in this series just so you'll be able to see everything on the screen and what the keys say and you can see what I'm hitting so you don't get lost trying to look for keys so if your internet isn't good enough to stream such a um, resolution, then my apologies, but let's get straight into it. In your calculator, you might notice this button right here called the Pergram key, which stands for program. If you go to it, you can see my huge list of um, programs that I've calculated. I used to have more, but then I accidentally dropped my calculator, and for some reason the whole thing got erased. Very sad event, but mainly it just has stuff from my physics class on it. Now, um, we'll create a new thing, and we'll just call it Hello. As you can see on this calculator, the alpha key, you see behind a lot of the keys are green letters, and that means when you press alpha and you press the key, it gives you the output of what is green. Now, when you're making a program name, it's um, auto alpha, alpha lock, so whatever you press is letters, and you don't have to keep pressing alpha, and we're just going to name this Hel Hello. Not hell Q. Press enter. So now, as you can see, we're in the calculator's program interface. Now, every line starts with a colon, and that's just the line starter for the certain language that this uses. And just a simple with Hello World, we can go when you press program while you're editing a program, there's control things, which is a long list of things, IO, which stands for input output, and execute, which means you can execute other programs that you already have within this program. But we're just going to do something simple. We'll go to disp which is number three on the IO tab and it stands for display so we click on that and if we want to display a string or a sequence of words and characters we'll do alpha uh, alpha plus which is a quote mark and we'll just I'll put alpha lock on so I don't have to keep pressing alpha and we'll just type out hello uh, and again, if you if you look around all your calculators with all the blue and green and normal stuff, there's a ton of characters you can type, you know, like the comma, and there's a space if you do alpha zero, question marks. There's also exclamation points, which are factorials. You should know that, though. And we'll just continue. Now, one of the things you might be asking yourself is, why would you want to program your calculator? Well, real quick, we'll just do second mode which quits out of the current thing we'll just go down to this and we'll run hello we run it and it simply prints out hello world what we told it because display just prints out exactly what you tell it to do but again you might be asking yourself why do you want to learn how to program your calculator one I mean maybe not for you but for me it's obviously fun because I very much enjoy programming no matter what it is but what you can do exactly what I did for physics as you see this long thing long stuff all this stuff is that you can program it to do formulas for you like whenever I have a subject I normally do like A or a sequence of A's just to make sure it's near the top and then the subject name so this is for physics if I click on it it brings me to a menu of if I want to do gravitational force friction or just show me all the formulas like if I go to gravity two objects and want to solve the force the mass um, I forget the mass of the Earth. I think it's 5.98 e. If you do um second comma, it gives you e. That's basically a shortened form of times 10 to the power of whatever you put after it. So I'm going to put 24, and I think that's the mass of the Earth. So that so this simple so this is basically 5.98 times 10 to the power of 24, which is scientific notation. So I don't have to write that. Uh, my mass is approximately eh, approximately 80 kilograms. And the distance between me and the center of the Earth, um, I forget, I think it's something like that. Okay, it's, maybe if I convert that to a decimal, yeah, it's sort of close. 
But yeah, as you can see, you can program your calculator, calculator to do stuff for you. Now, in this episode, I'm just going to explain a couple things for a very simple program. So we're going to create another new one. Oh, my calculator is going to be so full by the end of this. And we're just going to call it Pith. And this stands for the Pythagorean Theorem, which is what we're going to do. It's fairly easy. Now, if we go to input-output, there'll be input and prompt. Both of these ask for a variable. But um, input, if you just uh, you put input and the variable you're setting, like B, and basically it would input, it would ask you, it would um, print to the screen question mark, and then you input the value for it. It wouldn't tell you what variable you're setting unless, um, what I just learned, you could do like... Um, do uh, b, oh fuck, sorry, b equals comma b. So if we just run real quick, ran this, it's number zero, it'll be b equals, we can put three. Hey, that's just what it does, we, we didn't do it anything else, if we go back and edit it, um, instead of input, I prefer prompt. What prompt does, you only give it the thing, and it basically asks you B question mark. So, it basically, it tells you the variable you're setting it to, which will be B, as that says. So, another, so um, for the Pythagorean theorem, we want to know, for the way we're solving it, A squared plus A squared, um, A squared equals B squared plus C squared, is how we're going to do it. So what we want to find, we want to ask you, the user, for B, and we also want to ask it for C. We could either do another prompt on this line for C, but or we could just do comma C up here and completely clear this line. So now that we have the variables from the person, we can actually do the formula. And we'll just do it the easy way, and we'll do this. Now, when you're programming, you don't get like this special view, the math print font you do when you're at your like home screen for the calculator. So parentheses matter more than anything, especially when you're in the programming mode. So we're just going to do b squared plus c squared. And we're going to do sto, which is restore. Um, what's weird about the calculator language is that whenever you're setting a variable, the variable is always on the right side, which is very weird, especially if you know other languages. But So we're creating a new variable, which is a. And that a is going to be equal to the left side, which is a square root of b squared plus c squared. And then all we want to do is display a. So we can quit. We can run pith, which I remember is 0, and ask for b. b equals question mark. We'll just do a normal Pythagoras triangle, a 3, 4, and the answer should be 5. Ta-da! Now if we did went back and ran it again and did something like 5, 10, then this should be really weird. But yeah, it's a Pythagorean theorem on your calculator. That's just a simple way as opposed to typing out, you know, like 5, you can type out like 3, what the hell am I doing? Okay, 3 squared plus 4 squared square root of answer. So it's just a, um, it's not necessarily faster, but it's definitely more convenient than, um, doing it out by hand, you know, you could all, always just done it like once, such as what we programmed it. But again, programming is a lot more convenient, especially when you get into a lot of the longer ones. Now that obviously, um, these episodes are going to be pretty short, since I am recording these in 1080p, so the file sizes will be a bit big for my computer. Um, they'll, um, well, they'll eventually pile up, but again, this is all I'm going to teach you. In the first episode, it's more of an introductory thing, I will teach you all about eventually all of the things down here there's plenty of useful things especially in IO you know displaying graphs and tables and clearing things and printing things and internal execution is what I do for all like uh, excuse me for my um met menu things so like what I do when I do a physics if I pick gravity it runs gravity this program internally but yeah, oh crap, didn't want to do that. But yeah, okay. So I will see you next time, which should be tomorrow. And good luck programming.